Hello, this is Cyril. I'm going to read an article that my roommate Bruce wrote last night. It started out as a comment on a video that he was replying to on YouTube. And um, it was long enough to be an article. And sometimes he likes to show me uh, comments. And um, I don't like comments that I like to get lost in YouTube. I think they're worth preserving and keeping for some of us who want to know certain truths about um, the world and about, you know, Israel, etc. You know, the way Israel, the Israeli government is be behaving and the way corporate rule is behaving. And um, initially I was going to put it on my spoofs thing on Spotify for podcasters, but um, I decided since it's on a more serious note, I'll put it on a separate uh, episode. I want my roommate to watch it, watch this presentation. Um, he gave me permission to read this. I think it will sound better with a human voice than with AI. I tried uh, having AI read it, um, but AI isn't doing very well reading it. You know, sometimes you have to you have to have a human being read it, you know, for the right inflections and the right tone of voice. So anyway, without further ado, here we go. This is Political Judo by Bruce, arranged by Cyril, me. I wrote this. I, uh, wrote, you know, copied it. All right. Dear people of the world, I encourage you to search at least three things. Number one, Israel knew Hamas attack plan more than one year ago from the New York Times, also the article designed to start a war. MSNBC, October 7th, was an allowed and enhanced event. Number two, Ben-Gurion Canal, please excuse me for mispronouncing, Ben-Gurion Canal. Three, R R2P. One, just as a half-truth is as good as a lie, an attack on one's country that is allowed to happen, especially when enhanced by attacks by your own troops, should be considered treason. Israel has an expert spy agency. Mossad and Israel knew about October 7th, far in advance. They were warned by their own troops and by Egypt. The excuse that they didn't think Hamas could pull it off doesn't wash when they had their troops on a seven-hour stand-down on October 7th. And Israel's leaders enhanced the effect by finally responding with tanks firing into a kibbutz, using the Hannibal Directive to kill their own people. Look up Hannibal Directive if you don't know what we're talking about. To kill their own people and blame Hamas. The same tactic was used at the music festival. Hopefully we all know what, what we're talking about there, the music festival. Using Hellfire missiles fired from Apache helicopters. The results there were melted cars, and Bruce wrote that in capital letters, melted cars with charred bodies. Results not achievable by Hamas. Small arms fire. The cars will be shredded and buried in a secret location. The helicopters made more than one run, reloading and unloading, without differentiating between Hamas and Israelis. Hamas, of course, was blamed for all the deaths. If you're having trouble understanding the context, I invite you to um, rewind on the episode. This is a lot, and I'm even having a little trouble understanding what how he wrote this. There's quotation marks um, and single quote marks and hyphens that are confusing me a little bit. So uh, please, you know, I'm doing my best here to, with the inflections and the, you know, he was worried, Bruce was worried about that. Okay. Um, number two, why in capital letters, why was this allowed to happen even enhanced? And he quoted enhanced with a question mark. Why was this allowed to happen even enhanced? Could it be that Netanyahu and company wanted this, capitalized wanted, wanted this war, K 
capitalized Y. The answer may be found by searching Ben Gurion Canal, quote unquote, a project to rival the Suez Canal that has been desired for many decades. Now, maybe the time is right if they can clear Gaza in capital letters, clear Gaza of those pesky Palestinians. Makes me think about ethnic cleansing. Ugh. Time for a genocide. Israel's benefactor, the U.S., has experienced has experience with genociding their na- their natives. I guess we're talking about the indigenous people here in the United States. Um, the Israel's benefactor, the U.S., has experience with genociding their natives, and of course, oil and gas have been found offshore from Gaza. Number three. Please search R2P, Responsibility to Protect. This is an internationally accepted exception to the sacred nature of sovereignty. Vietnam invaded Cambodia in 1978 with little objection because they were stopping Pol Pot's genocide. With Israel's present genocide and history of the Nakba and apartheid, both against the Palestinians and supporting it in South Africa, One could argue in favor of outside military invention to stop Israel's genocide against the Palestinians. The U.S. will certainly veto any effective action against Israel at the U.N., but Israel is now widely seen as a dangerous pariah state, like Nazi Germany, and meriting the world's restraint. That will be tricky, considering they have nuclear weapons, but they might be taken out with hypersonic missiles. I hate to think this way, says Bruce, but it isn't right to just allow a genocide and apartheid, perhaps even worse than South Africa's apartheid. People debate a one-state and a two-state solution. Neither may be possible until this criminal rogue state is collared. Who? Several smaller states have displayed courage standing up to Israel. It may take BRICS or another coalition to put a stop to this. It looks like the world is moving in that direction. From Bruce. I, that's from Bruce. I hope so. I'll, I'll add something. I really hope so, too. I, they've gone beyond too far. If I say too far, that's an understatement. Thank you, Bruce, for uh, letting me use this, for giving me your permission to use this. This was a comment on YouTube. I don't know. Maybe uh, he can supply me with the uh, the video he was responding to, if he can remember. Um, if there's a place for me to comment on my own uh, presentation, maybe I'll, I'll supply the video he was responding to. But a uh, good article. Um, I think Bruce should write a book and uh, get paid for it. <laughs> it's great. Great information if you think like me, if you think like us. All right, I hope you're having a really safe New Year's Day. Uh, What's your New Year's resolution? Um, My New Year's resolution is to keep on saving the world. No. (laughs) And since I'm part of the world, myself too. Bye now. Happy New Year. We can change the years if we change history.